There are Christian teachers, there are Reformed teachers that actually teach this idea that what Jesus said is impossible and therefore you're to live in guilt and that's part of what godliness means, being guilty all the time and feeling guilty all the time. What Je the word perfect in the Bible doesn't mean sinless perfection, sinlessness, it means faithfulness. In other words, sinners can be perfect if they repent of their sins. Do what God says. What did God say to do when you sin? Repent. Ask forgiveness. Be reconciled to your brother. And when you do that, even though you can say, man, I have sinned. I have sinned so many times I can't count it. I couldn't even tell you there's so many sins in my life. I couldn't describe them. And I'm a perfect man. It's amazing. Because that's true. David could say that. He argued and demanded that God judge his enemies because of his righteousness, he says, because I'm righteous and they are not. What did David mean? He didn't mean I'm sinless and they are not. That's not true. And David, of all people, knew that. He said, I am the one who's seeking to honor you. When I sin, I confess it. They don't. I want to bring glory to you. They don't. I really want to learn your word and do it. They don't. They are not righteous, I am. And he wasn't bragging, he's just stating the facts. That's the truth. And you better be able to say the same thing. You better be able to say, Lord, because of my perfection, I pray that you will deliver me and judge those who are being unjust in the world. Deliver your people because of their perfection and righteousness. And deliver them for your glory. That's what... Jesus is describing in the Beatitudes. This is the perfection of God's people. They're not sinless, but they're like this. They live like God seeks. They seek to live like God seeks, like God lives. Trusting in him, following him, means leaving the old ways of sin and rebellion and walking in the way that God lays out in his word, the way that he desires all his creatures to live. Being poor in spirit, being meek, hungering and thirsting for righteousness, being merciful and pure and seeking the peace of God and being a shalom maker, a shalom spreader. In these ways, God's people become his instruments to preserve life and promote life in the world. So Jesus goes on to say that his people are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. It's an amazing description of the church. If the church, is, the church is the new Israel, right? So we are now, we are now the ones that this describes. And Jesus says, my church is the salt of the earth. My church is the light of the world. That means that you cannot ignore the church. 